Welcome to another episode of Energy 101. Today, we have on the man, the myth. And our boss, <laughs> Frax Lab. <laughs> He's not my boss. <laughs> Frax Lab. <laughs> Welcome to Energy 101. Are you excited to be here? Stoked. <laughs> yeah. Stoked. You sound like it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I am. I love the show. I've actually, I have never listened to a Digital Wildcatters podcast before y'all's Really? Sure. And I've listened to two of them. I will say he mm. laughs every time he watches us. I do. Are they funny? They are funny. I like when Jules is like, if Colin's listening, don't fire me. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Colin, if you're listening, I'm I like, promise I still do my job. Noted. <laughs> it's like well, not fire. <laughs> putting this on your end of your review. Yeah. On our one on one, Jules, you remember in episode 23 when you said, <laughs> we got that shit on camera. So, <laughs> okay. So today, so for those of you who don't know, Colin, Worked on a rig for four years, five years. I mean, well, I mean, like as a roughneck. A roughneck for a couple of years. Okay. But I always worked on rigs and wireline. For like and, 10. Yeah, for a better part of a decade. So we brought him on to talk about what is a roughneck and like story real quick. So being from Midland, you just know what a roughneck is. I never questioned it. I just always like heard the term, whatever. The first time that I knew that it was like, not a normal thing was when I moved to Houston and a friend of mine was asking about Colin and like what he did. And I was like, oh yeah, he's a, he was a roughneck. And they were like, what's that? And they were like touching their neck. <laughs> and they're like, am I supposed to know that term? Am I rough yeah. or smooth? <laughs> and I'm like, I, I was like seriously dumbfounded. I was like, what do you, what do you mean you don't know what it is? Like it just didn't occur to me that people aren't, don't know anything about oil and gas. Missy and doesn't know. Had never rough heard neck. of a. Rough I don't know neck. what it is. Just found out two I minutes mean, ago. Missy doesn't know. Okay, so, so let's get into it. Colin, what's what is a roughneck? Hard hitting, dumb question. <laughs> <laughs> so a roughneck is someone who works on a drilling rig. So drilling rig is what drills an oil well. Y'all have probably seen videos on my TikTok, but they're these big, tall, you know, hundred twenty foot uh, tower looking things. Um, and so on a drilling rig, you have typically five people that actually work the rig. You have uh, your floor hands. So when you first start on a rig, you start in a worm's corner. So you're called a worm. And a worm? A worm. <laughs> a worm. Yeah. That's what they call you, worm. I have no idea how that actually originated, but you start off in worm's corner. And uh, have y'all seen that video I did on TikTok of like the roughneck? He's like throwing chain and mm -hmm. it's got the tongs. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a that's a floor hand. So you have two of those, and they're the ones that are like responsible for all the bitch work. And so you uh, make up your connections of your drill pipe, and when you're not doing that, you're doing tasks around the rig, like you are scrubbing the rig. Uh, you're just you have a scrub brush and some soap, and you're scrubbing and cleaning the rig. You're picking up trash. You're cleaning up the uh, the dog house and you're helping the derrick hand mix mud so you are literally just there for muscle and labor purposes like that's all you're good for then you move up to motorman and motorman is responsible for the roughnecks so usually that's like your first like leadership position now you got your two little worms over there that you get to boss around <laughs> yeah, yeah and you're responsible for all the motors <laughs> on the rig so um, on like a traditional rig, you have a couple of generator sets and then you have a couple of, uh, diesel generators that run your mud pumps. And so you're responsible for the maintenance on those, changing out filters, changing out the oil. Um, if something on the rig breaks, you're responsible for going around and fixing that. Then the next position is Derrick hand. So Derrick hand has two primary responsibilities. One, um, you help control the drilling mud system. So when you drill a well, you use drilling mud. And that drilling mud is uh, used for a few different things. So one, um, it's used to cool off the bit. It's used to bring your cuttings back up. So when you have a drill bit down a hole, it's chewing up rock. And you mm -hmm. got to get all those cuttings back up to surface. So you pump mud down your drill pipe, and then it comes out, and it brings the cuttings up. And then it's used um, to have uh, hydrostatic pressure to keep uh, gas down. That way you don't have a blowout. I've also probably seen some of my videos where like rigs are on fire mm -hmm. and shit. That's because your mud weight wasn't heavy enough. And so gas was able to push all your mud out of the hole and you lose control of the well. 
So Derek Hand does that, and then they go all the way up the Derek to uh, trip pipe, and they're the ones that actually like, pull the pipe out of the hole. Then, like the top position um, on the rig crew is the driller. So the driller's head honcho for the crew. Um, he's the one that actually drills the weld. And so you go out to these uh, new top drive rigs, and it's like really high tech. Like inside the doghouse, they got this big uh, chair with like joysticks and all these computer screens. On the rigs I started working on, it was nowhere near as cool. You just had this like steel brake handle and you sit, you would stand outside and control it and you look at your weight indicator. So those are the five people. And then after that, you move up to tool pusher and you get to sit in your, um, in your shack all day in your trailer and just yell at people. So those are the five positions on a drilling rig. Um, super labor intensive job, super dangerous job. How do um, they like, how do you know? Like if you're going to get hired on to be a roughneck or a Derek Hand, you're not, do you, they don't teach someone how to be a roughneck. Wait, in college. that's exactly what I was going to ask. So, how do you, how, did how you are you learn learning the technical yeah. side, side of it? Um, yeah, you learn when you get out there. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I remember when I got hired on, we had to go do this physical and they would have you, like, we went to, it was like this like physical therapy place and they would have us lift up like these big, 80 pound lifting subs and like, okay, pick this up and put it up on that shelf. And you'd have to do that to show that you could physically pick up yeah. 80 pounds, There's like requirements. pounds. Yeah. And then once I passed that, you know, I'll tell my story personally, like, you know, I was young kid, 19, 20, however old I was. And, um, I didn't know shit. I didn't even know what a pipe wrench was much less how to use one. And this company that I worked for Savannah drilling, they came down to West Texas and they didn't like hands from Texas. So they wanted new people that had no experience that they could train up their own way. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got hired. Cause I actually got hired during a downturn from the 08 downturn. And so there were a lot of people sitting at home without jobs and here they hired me, this young kid green, but they're like, yeah, we can train you up our way. And so I, I walk into the guy's office. He's like, yeah, usually someone gets run off or quits, you know, every week. So, uh, we'll hire you, but it'll probably be like one or two weeks before you actually go out on a rig. And I was like, okay, cool. And then um, a few hours later, he calls me. He's like, hey, someone just got fired. You start tonight on Night Tower. Here's the rig. Um, be there at 5 p.m. And so I remember pulling up and I parked my truck on the side of the rig. Well, first I got lost. Um, I couldn't find the rig. And then I finally get out there and I pull up on the side and I just like sit on the tailgate of my truck. Like I'm scared as shit. Like it's loud, like the first sign of, a, of someone that's never been on a, a drilling rig before is they go out there and they just look up to the top of the drilling rig. So you can like spot a new person right yeah. away because they're just like kind of dumbfounded like by this yeah. operation. Yeah. And so um, to be honest, it's a really intimidating place. I was going to um, say, because if, yeah. if you fuck up, essentially it can blow up. Yeah. Right. No, I mean. You can die. Your coworkers can die. Yeah. And so it's really important um, or really critical to have a crew that's knowledgeable and is looking out for you and has an interest in actually teaching you. And so the problem with like drilling rigs is you get a lot of churn and a lot of people that just like come out there and crews may not be interested in training them because they're like, this guy's not going to last. And so as long as you have a attitude where you want to learn, people will teach you. But what's kind of scary is, is like, if you don't know any better, you are essentially trusting your, your, you're putting your life in these, these people's hands. Exactly, yeah. You know, there's, I have a story that's probably too gruesome for this podcast, but there was a story about this kid. Um, his driller told him to go up, um, and clean the derrick and they sent him up on a winch line up the derrick and they're still drilling. And so you have rotating equipment they're drilling the hole. You never go up in the derrick on a, on a winch line when they're drilling the hole. And uh, he ended up getting wrapped in the drill. And oh it was gosh. so bad that the fire department had to cut him in pieces to mm. get him down. Um, so, That's but very he, wow. he, he yeah. didn't know any, he didn't know any better. And so, but he just listened to, he trusted, oh, yeah. he the trusted that guy. Is yeah. telling you and what so to do. that's a scary part now. Um, <laughs> fortunately, the oil field has changed a lot since mm -hmm. I first started in 2010. And so safety is a huge thing. There's a, material change in level of professionalism out mm -hmm. there. 
And so you have a lot of good hands out there now that are very safety oriented and watching out. But yeah, if you just go out there and they scream at you, they haze you, um, they're assholes to you and you just, um, you pick up one thing at a time. I remember going home from one of my first days of roughnecking and talking to, uh, uh, my grandma and my uncle. And I was just like, yeah, these guys are like crazy. Cause like one, they're like rednecks, but mm-hmm. they're so smart. It's like they can fix anything out there with limited resources. Like they're like mechanics. But then they're also like engineers. They know what's going on two miles underground. And so mm-hmm. it's a super unique type of person that I've never ran across before, um, that they're just super rough, um, but also extremely smart. And so, yeah, yeah, it's just a job where you learn on the fly and there is no roughneck school. Like you don't go to school to learn how Mm -hmm. to do it. So school of hard knocks. Yeah. School of (laughs) hard knocks. A funny story is like one thing that's people aren't used to when they go on drilling rigs is that they're so loud. You really get used to reading people's lips. Like, that's huge for human communication. Actually, I think we all learned this like during COVID. Like, yeah, it's hard to like understand someone without being able to see their lips. And um, mm-hmm. 10x that on a drilling rig. And remember this uh, Derek Han, he kept telling me to go do something and I couldn't hear him. And I was like too embarrassed to tell him, like, like keep asking, like, what, what, what? So I'd go and do a task and it was always the wrong, the wrong thing. And finally one day he's like, Hey, are you fucking stupid? Or why do you not do what I ask you to? And I was like, Hey man, I'm going to be honest. Like I can't hear anything out here. So I was just guessing. Yeah. I was just guessing. (laughs) I'm just like trying to be busy. (laughs) So I have a kind of two part question. Can you explain what tripping pipe is? And do you remember the first time you tripped pipe and how you were taught to do it? Cause I know that you say like, there's no roughneck school, but they have to teach you how to like throw the whatever you throw. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, are you shadowing somebody until you? No, you're not shadowing anyone. <laughs> you're just like, <laughs> no. This is how you do it. Yeah. Okay, Get your so- ass out here. They're literally like yelling at you. <laughs> like, you, there's, there's no one Wait, to shadow. First explain oh what tripping pipe is. Yeah. So, tripping pipe um, is just when you are bringing pipe out of the ground or br- putting pipe in the ground. And so, when you're when you're actually drilling the well, you just drill section by section. You put a section of pipe in, you drill, and then you put another section of pipe in. Well, sometimes your drill bit may wear out, so you have to change the drill bit. So you have to trip all your pipe out, change the drill bit, and then trip all your pipe back in and then go back to tripping. Or if you're done drilling that section of the hole and it's time to run casing, you trip all of your pipe out and then you run casing in and then you trip your drill pipe back in and you start drilling the next section. So. That's all tripping is, is when you're pulling every stand uh, or every joint of pipe out of the hole or in the hole. Um, The first time I had a trip pipe, like, again, I was scared because all I, I remember like my first two or three days, like telling, like, I remember telling my stepdad, like, oh yeah, it's not that, you know, it's not that bad. Like, it's not as hard as I thought it was going to be. He's like, yeah, wait till you have to trip pipe. And like, everyone told me, wait till you have to trip pipe. So I remember the first like night. I had a trip pipe or driving to the rig and they're like, oh damn, we have to trip pipe. And I was like, fuck, like we got a trip pipe. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> man, I make it. <laughs> and um, you know, I don't actually remember how I learned how to use tongs. Like I don't remember how, like it's not a natural thing. I mean, these mm-hmm. things are um, how heavy are they? They're pretty heavy. They're probably about half the size of this table. And it's like a big pipe wrench, except like big steel. And they have these handles on them and they're suspended by a line and you have to like grab them and throw them over. And then it's called make them, it's called make them bite. Like if you can't make your tongs bite, like make them bite worm. Like it's like (laughs) ingrained in my mind. (laughs) And so you have to like latch them on and get them on. And, um, I do remember like one of the first times we tripped, um, there's this, uh, Sometimes when you when you run your pipe back and hold, there's this ter- term called U-tubing, and it's when uh, you have a pressure differential in your fluid, and it comes out of the pipe as you're running in. So all this water will come out of the top of the pipe, and the pipe's like you know, 30 to 90 feet in the air. And I'm standing in the corner, and for like two hours, every stand is just like, I mean, just raining down on me, like fucking waterfall. Jeez. And this is all like nasty water, and I'm just standing there, Finally, after my two hours, like two hours, my driller's like, 
you know, you can move, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, I like, honestly, I didn't know I could move. Like I'd <laughs> Wait, probably, back up. probably yell at my ass if I moved. Yeah. Yeah. Back up a little bit. So tongs are what is unscrewing the each connection from each other, right? Yeah. And so now you have different. So this is also important to note is that um, we have completely different drilling technology today than when I started 10 years ago. So the rigs that I worked on uh, were uh, just called rotary rigs and uh, or Kelly rigs. And the rigs I worked on looked like the rigs from the early 1900s, like nothing had changed, um, like nothing at all. And then when we started drilling horizontal wells, um, we actually developed what's called top drive technology. And so top drives it's actually kind of like a big drill, like a big screw, like you can actually spin it from the top. And so where Kelly rigs, your table actually had a rotary and it would turn down here. And so on rotary rigs, yeah, we'd put our tongs on and the tongs would break the uh, pipe apart and then you put on your pipe spinner and spin it out. And so you still use tongs today, but they actually have what are called iron roughnecks, they're ST80s. And it's like this big machine and they move it over there, sometimes as an automated arm, sometimes you have to swing it and it can clamp on both to the top pipe and to the bottom pipe and the roughneck has hydraulic joysticks that he can undo it. So they call them puff necks today. Um, <laughs> they don't have to do as much work. Um, so yeah, but that's how we use tongs back in the day. Do you know the history of the term roughneck? Um, I actually don't know the Ooh. history you heard it here first frack slap doesn't yeah. know everything <laughs> <laughs> no i have a i have a question um like a day in the life of a roughneck how it obviously it sounds like in a very very exhausting job yeah so like what were your hours like are you yeah. tripping pipe for 12 hours straight i mean some days really? yeah some days um so our rig, you worked 12 hour towers and it was usually a drive, an hour drive there and an hour drive back to the rig. So I'd wake up at four o'clock every morning and then leave by 4.15 or 4.30. And then we had to be at the rig at 5.30 for a uh, crew change. And so um, those were like 14 hour <laughs> days all in all um, with drive time. And we worked four weeks straight with two weeks off. Um, I used to work like, I went like five months without a day off. Just, I worked every single day. Um, cause I liked stacking bread. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's like the typical day. Um, some days you are tripping pipe all day. Um, sometimes you get stuck in the hole and you have to fish. And so you're doing fishing operations all day. Some days you're slow drilling and you don't really have like slow drilling as much anymore in shale. Um, they kind of burn through these wells now. Um, it's crazy how fast we drill wells now. But back in the day, we had lots of slow drilling and you're never just sitting on your ass. Like, yeah. all right, slow mm -hmm. drilling, we'll go grab some paint and paint handrails or, um, you know, go tear down a pump and one of the mud pumps and fix it. So um, days can differ on what, you're actually doing on an activity basis. And then, you know, the thing about drilling rigs is that you're out in the elements. And <laughs> so it doesn't matter if it's 120 degrees or if it's negative 20 degrees, mm -hmm. um, you're out there in the elements and you don't have a lot of um, protection. So, you know, I was just talking to one of my guys, or one of my friends up in Wyoming, it was like negative 50 there last month. And it's video. funny, yeah, he sent video. me a video of yeah. his rig and instantly I knew it was a Canadian rig because all the Canadian rigs have the same layout. It looked just like the one I worked on. And all these guys have is like some canvas wind walls to block the wind, but that's it. I mean, they're out there in the elements and drilling rigs don't shut down. They run 24 seven Yeah. Um, because you can't just stop drilling a hole in the middle of doing it. So um, you're out there in the elements um, and, you know, kind of give you some context of like how much physical work it is. I went out there weighing like 165 pounds, I think, and like super lean muscle. Like I didn't have any fat and I lost 30 pounds my first month. I want to put, wow. I want to put your, the picture of you like that, you know what I'm talking That's about? That's not even the worst. Yeah. I want to put that on the thumbnail because yeah. <laughs> you look like a zombie. Yeah. Really? I definitely yeah. look like a psycho yeah. there. Um, and that was like when I was running wireline and when I ran wireline, oh. 
Yeah, I was on a waterline truck there. I didn't know that. And waterline, we worked like 100, 120 hours a week out in the field doing that. But yeah, roughnecking was harder physical work. Um, wireline was longer, longer hours. So what is your biggest, actually, let me ask it this way. Do you have to have a very strong work ethic to be a roughneck <laughs> or did being a roughneck give you a very strong work ethic? Uh, uh, a little bit that's good. Mm-hmm. That's a good question. That was, that was deep. <laughs> it was. Um, I think you have to have a hard work ethic to make it out there. Want. Like there's no um, – there's no slack out there. Like yeah. you're a five person crew. And I think like one of the, one of the biggest things I learned from a rig is like always put a hand on something. Like I can't just sit and watch someone struggle and do something mm-hmm. without helping them. Like you do that on a rig, they'll run you off. Like you're expected to help wherever you can. And, um, so, you know, most people don't make it on a rig. Um, can't tell you how many people I saw start and <laughs> quit a week or two later. So, I think that you have to have a hard work ethic. And I think like when you grow up on drilling rig, it probably boldens that work ethic and makes it deeper. So, Well, and essentially when you're like you said earlier, your life quite literally depends on it. Yeah. In other people's lives. It makes Mm -hmm. you very mentally tough too. I will say just watching you during those years of especially the 12 hour nights, you would work. 12 hours but then the drive was you were home for maybe five hours but would sleep the entire time like there there was no life outside of it yeah and it makes you not only mentally tough but it like that also kind of waterfalls to family life and i'm sure other oil filled families can um relate uh, yeah relate Mm -hmm. like you have to be just like he's learning to be resourceful out on the field in the field it's like i had to learn to be resourceful without i don't mean to make this about like you yeah. being no. my husband but it's true like oh, yeah no. you learn, like i had to do a lot of things alone and learn that yeah i mean <laughs> like, oil field families relatable. i mean like i said on drilling rig remember this one christmas specifically because we were at a point in the well like once you run casing and cement a well you can actually like at that point you don't have open hole and you can take a break if you want. And we were at that point and it was Christmas day and the oil company that we were drilling for, um, said, Hey, give the gut pull up and give the guys uh Christmas day off so they can be with their families. And our drilling superintendent for our company said, fuck those guys, they can work. And so <laughs> oh, we great. had to work on Christmas Day. I'm sure because his and, family was like back in Canada. Yeah, probably so. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. he's like, bye, so, be here there. <laughs> yeah, no, that's like a thousand percent what, yeah. the, uh, what the issue was. And so, um, yeah, you know, I think that, one, I appreciate people that work out in the field. It's funny, like when you work out in the field, everyone in the office be like, oh, we appreciate our field guys. And when you're field hand, you're like, man, these fucking corn balls. Like, why are they so <laughs> yeah. cheesy? Like, I'm just out here doing it. But now that I'm out of the field, I really have a respect for people that are out there. And what's cool is like, I was going to say guys out there, but like you get on TikTok and there's girls that are roughnecking and making hands on work over rigs. And mm-hmm. it's pretty badass to see that because you didn't really see that back when. I started. That's like a goal I have in life. Just like I want one day as a roughneck just because I want to see what it feels like. Julie's going to lose some fingers. I'll be the supervisor. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be driven the pipe. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see if But I-, I want it to be like where the mud comes all over you. Like I want the dirty like old school feeling not like you better the automated watch what rig. you ask for because i feel like frack slap will make <laughs> yeah. it happen right? i want it i want it to this happen. is the first time i've ever heard someone be like yeah i want to be covered in mud and like <laughs> I want to go out there this and is like oil this is oil based <laughs> mud like it's nasty shit i mean i know i used to see you we used to, to drill scrub it off we used to drill with um brine water and it's just really heavy uh salt water essentially and so if you look at like your fluids, we'll get a little technical here. So fresh water weighs uh, 8.3 pounds per gallon. And then your brine water can weigh, you know, nine to 10 pounds. And then you have drilling mud where you can get it. It's like super heavy, you know, 13 pounds or so. And um, we used to drill part of our sections with brine water. And when we trip it, you just get covered mm. in salt water, like to the 
point where you take off your pants and they would stand straight up because they had so oh much salt gosh, in them. Wow. But it's not just salt either. Like there's like radiation and all kinds of like nasty shit. And so, um, all that is to say, like, I'm probably going to die a painful death of like mesothelioma <laughs> of like inhaling uh, silica from drilling mud and frac sand. And um, that's what happens when you work in an industrial setting. But are you sure you still want to go? I yeah. really do. I have such a love for the field that I'm like, I just want to like experience it one time. You want to hear a funny story? Uh, it would story. be cool one to time, go on a rig. One time mm -hmm. Julie brought me lunch to a rig and like I'm on the rig floor <laughs> and I can see her out on, like, you know, on oil leases out in Midland, like it's wide open. Like you can yeah. see for fucking miles and I can see her truck and she's like, I don't know how to get there. And I'm like, what do you mean? I can see you. Like, can you see our rig? She's like, yeah, I can see the rig, but I don't know how to get there. And it ended up like, she wouldn't go through the cattle guard because it said no trespassing, <laughs> even though it was like our lease road. And so like this sign is like keeping her from going through it. I'm like, I was actually a cattle. I'm she like, was practicing her role What the hell are you doing? Like, just keep following the road. <laughs> no, that was honestly the most God, like, I see you. She's like, I can't, the sign says no yeah. trespassing. Yeah. It's a, it's it's a, like, good thing it's our rig. It's right? 100%, that was That's the situation. That's me in a nutshell. <laughs> you rule follower. <laughs> That uh, it's intimidating though. Like no, I know. driving up to a rig and and for me, I like was probably super anxious and like I look stupid right now. <laughs> well, to be fair, like I mean, I went on a non oil lease road one time that said no trespassing, and the rancher came out with a shotgun and like okay, yeah, I'm not trying to get shot. They're hyper aggressive. You know what? So. I take me safe. Yeah. You're not a roll follower. I would have been a roll follower. Yeah. <laughs> okay, before we head into rapid fire because we have to wrap this up, I'm gonna read the definition of a roughneck and where it comes from, because I think it's hilarious. Okay, so the term comes from Texas and is used to refer to a rugged individual. Then it was a word used for someone who worked on an oil rig. But now a roughneck is someone, usually a big man, who's <laughs> tough, crude, and ready to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Roughnecks are the what? opposite of mild-mannered people. Where the Cullen, fuck I just feel like that's where the fuck are you this reading Urban Dictionary? <laughs> yeah, that, that sounded like Urban Dictionary. Jeez, Hold sure. on, let I me thought see. we were actually going to get some history of where. No, the... it wasn't real history. No, it was actually vocabulary.com. So I've let actually looked up where the term roughneck comes from before, and it's um, undetermined on how that name was actually. Oh, no, somebody answered it. Undetermined. It's on you right yeah. now. Like, no one knows. So let's go to rapid All fire. All right, rapid fire. Here we go. <laughs> number one, mi Number one misconception about the oil and gas industry. Uh, number one misconception is that it's just a bunch of redneck digging holes in, in the ground uh, and discovering oil when it's actually one of the most complex operations in the world and pushing the boundaries of physics. Damn. Super technical. Yeah. Two, why should we care about the oil and gas industry? Because uh, we don't know anything about speak it. Speak to Gen Zers. Yeah. And yeah. Their, in their language. You should care about the oil and gas industry because the last 15 to 20 years has been one of the most prosperous times in humankind. Um, and that has been enabled by cheap and reliable energy in the United States, AKA fossil fuels. So all of this prosperity that we've had in the United States since 2009, 2010, which we have all benefited from, mm -hmm. was a direct result of oil and gas and the shell revolution in the United States. So that's why we should care about it. Colin, I was really hoping you would take that time to use your new vocabulary. Your oil and gas is a grizzly bear. <laughs> oil and gas is full of grizzly bears. So. <laughs> all right. Frag slap. Is that Tell all the rapid us. fire? No, last one. Oh, okay. Your most embarrassing story in your career. I feel like mm -hmm. you have maybe a few. Um, <laughs> How many times have you embarrassed I'm just kidding. Yourself? Okay, so most embarrassing story. I have two. So one, like I told you, you get hazed when you out onto a drilling rig. And when I started working, so I graduated high school weighing 135 pounds. Like I was super skinny. And then I was like, dude, fuck this. I don't want to be skinny. So all I did all day was pull-ups and just drank a shit ton of protein. And I gained like a ton of weight. It was all muscular, filling myself. And I go out to this drilling rig <laughs> and they're like, how much do you bench press? And I don't remember what I told them. And they're like, I bet you can't bench press a bag of mud. And a bag of mud is a hundred pounds. It's like, fuck yeah, I can, I can bench press that. And so 
um, we go down there and they're like, okay, let's see this. And so I like start ripping it out. They're like, no, 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 no. Like do a shoulder press. I'm like, okay. And so I take this uh, sack of mud and I sh- and I press it over my shoulders. And when I do that, they take a knife and they cut the bag oh, and all yeah. the drilling mud goes <laughs> all over Joke's on me. you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so you get for being a meathead. Yeah. So that was my <laughs> initiation. Um, and then like, I don't have a lot of like embarrassing like stories. Like I don't get embarrassed by like get embarrassed by my kids like hey when my kids like act up in public that's the only thing that embarrasses me but he gets real embarrassed he'll just leave <laughs> really? us he'll leave us just for julie to be embarrassed yeah. <laughs> yeah. those are her kids not my kids yeah. <laughs> um i think like another so like coming up in the oil field like i have a baby face like you know it doesn't look like it now because i can grow a beard but um, like I couldn't grow a beard five years ago. And so imagine when I'm like 20 to 24 years old, like I look like I am like a teenager. And I took this job at Adventure and I'm managing all these millions of dollars of drilling and completions projects. And I go and run this one job, uh, I believe it was for Hillcorp. And we have a meeting in uh, Hillcorp's boardroom So there's like 10 people in there. And then they also videoed in the field office from Pennsylvania. So there's like, I don't know, 10 people on that call. And they started off, um, I'm giving a presentation on what we're going to do on this operation. And they start off the meeting. One guy in the room's like, all right, everyone. He's like, you know, you may be watching through that video screen. And uh, yeah, Colin looks like he's 14 years old, (laughs) but he knows what he's talking about. So just give him a chance. And I was like, you motherfucker. <laughs> so, I love that he had to point that out. Yeah, right? yeah thanks. <laughs> thanks. And so. Um, this guy is legit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we There's a couple of times where like I was just like punked on in front of everyone. That's like my villain story. That's why I have so much hate in my heart. And You also yeah. get really mad when people are like, oh, that guy looks like he's 12. You are like you get really yeah, irritated. Like tri- it triggers me. Well, yeah. today, Julie's oh. like, were, were you born in 2003? I'm like, girl, I was born in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have one more rapid fire because I think it pertains to your time in the field. What is the scariest moment from lack of sleep you had, like mm. driving home? I'm sure there was a lot. I've had a few. I know. What's the scariest? So can I tell all of them? If you want. You want all my war stories? Yes. How much time we have? Well, actually, Man, you just had a little country twang right yeah. there when you just said that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talking your, talk your, your field voice. accent. I don't know if I can bring out my field accent. Um, I know it's in there so far. No, so let's talk about like long hours and safety because um, I remember this was the coldest winter I've ever experienced in Midland. And it was like negative 10 degrees. And we would spend all night just thawing out things like our rig had frozen completely. So we're just out there with like uh, weed torches and thawing things out. And we could not wait to get in the truck and drive home because it was just like so warm. And so uh, I was carpooling with one of my friends, Alex, uh, one of my coworkers, obviously. And we were driving on I-20 and he almost he was driving and he almost ran into this car, like into the back of it. And I had to take the wheel and swerve. And I was like, dude, are you all right? And his eyes are wide open. He's like, yeah, man, I'm just dodging all of these hoses in the middle of the road. And he was sleeping oh, with shit. his eyes open, oh, driving. Yeah. yeah. It's and terrifying. And that is another sad. scary time was, um, this wasn't really that scary for me because I was in a semi truck. I'm driving this semi and I'm on I-20 and it's like 4.30 in the morning and a truck comes from the other side of the road through the median and almost hits me head on. It was a F-150. It was like snowing, right? No. Oh, sorry. Julie's, <laughs> Julie's got a Julie's toxic trait is like interrupting, and interrupting, and just being about. completely off base. Um, and anyways, he ended up hitting a guardrail. Thankfully, not hitting me. And so driving on Will for Roads is really dangerous because lack of sleep and um, heavy equipment, and there's lots of two lane roads, and so you have a lot of head on collisions. And in the middle in of the oil. night, mm-hmm. yeah, right? yeah. And so um, it's actually like. Driving is the most dangerous part of working in the oil field. Actually, driving is the most dangerous part of everyone's life. Yeah. You just don't realize it, but especially dangerous on the oil field. Yeah. So. It was scary. Yeah. Midland. So, y'all know what a roughneck is now? We accomplished the job. We did. Quiz, what's a roughneck? A roughneck is someone who works on a drilling rig. Yes. There we go. <laughs> Dumbing it down for all of our listeners. <laughs> 
All right. Awesome. Thank you, Frack Slap, for coming on and teaching us. Um, this is actually where the show originated, Colin, around a whiteboard, teaching all of us. Oh, um, yes. All about <laughs> oil and gas. <laughs> right. You know, yeah, mapping it out. So um, thank you. We'll have to use this for content for our, our onboarding for new employees. Yeah. They and don't come from energy. I think that we should do a part two on like onshore versus offshore. Yeah. Oh, oh I for, yeah, because you've been offshore as well. That would be actually very, very interesting. Really quick, mm -hmm. which yeah. do you prefer? Uh, if it, uh, yeah, if I prefer either. so deep water drilling is like a cakewalk. Um, like you get to eat good, great accommodations. Um, all the roughnecks out there are fat as shit because they don't actually work, and so <laughs> everything's automated on those rigs, like completely automated. So it was like that ten years ago too. Yeah, it's been like that for a long time. Um. Deep water drilling rigs are some of the most advanced pieces of machinery in the world. So um, I prefer, I don't know, uh, just straight up cowboy in it on land rigs is uh, pretty fun. So I prefer that type of work then. Stay tuned for part two yeah. of yeah. Frack Slap Travels. <laughs> Frack Slap. Frack Slap. <laughs> I'm sorry, what just came out of that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I was going to say. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, All right. Let's um, get out of here. So announcements. I think, will this come out before wine night? It will come out on the day of wine night. Wine mm. night is tonight. Wine night is tonight. 6 p.m. Drift in the Heights. Come hang out with us. Have a glass of wine. For free. For free. Um, and then Energy Tech Night, February 9th. Mm -hmm. um at the heights theater and empower is coming up anything coming else? up mm -hmm. that's all i got yeah y'all have the longest endings ever well we can't ever end it you yeah. want to hear our ending <laughs> y'all ready three two one bye, bye. <laughs> and like and subscribe <laughs>